Hello everyone. Today is Friday, January 15, 2016. This is the short version of the water supply forecast and my name is Brian McInerney. I'm the hydrologist at the National Weather Service in Salt Lake City, Utah. So let's take a look at where we are. Actually, let's take a look at where we were last year. And this feature was a big blocking high pressure that essentially blocked all the good weather, all the good snow that we could have had for the most part during last year's wintertime. It shunted it north, most of it went into the Midwest and up the East Coast, and this was the dominant weather pattern right here. We were high and dry, we had low snow packs by the time spring came, and it was a tough go. Now we fast forward to November of this year, what we see is a different pattern. The high is a lot smaller and it's retrograded out over the Pacific, leaving the door open for more storms. Unfortunately, during November, what we saw were storms coming in, but they would travel down the coast and then kind of swoop in this way, leaving Utah pretty much dry. Uh, Southern Utah did a little bit better, but it wasn't the greatest. Then we moved into December last month. Again, the high is out here, the doors open, and we had a zonal flow. The jet stream came right across northern Utah, did quite well, and we produced a lot of snow during December, which brought our numbers up significantly. They could be better, but we're doing a little bit better, especially in southern Utah. When you look at the precip anomaly starting in the water year, and we start that in October, warmer colors indicate below average precip, cooler colors indicate above normal precip, and when you see October, we were really shut out northern Utah. You can see parts of the south, desert southwest did a, did a lot better, but where most of the people live in northern Utah in the mountains, we didn't do so well starting off. Then we move into November, and what we see, it's very dry again, even though we did have an active pattern. Uh, we saw record flooding in Missouri, Texas, Oklahoma, and those areas during this time frame. But still, we have an active pattern, but we weren't getting it because it was going a little bit too far south. And then you move into December and things look much better for Utah. And this is where we are with regard to snow in the mountains for the most part. This is where we had the biggest storms during that time. Uh, again, the Midwest, upper Midwest had all sorts of problems with flooding and intense rainfall and kind of wild weather during that time. Now, when you look at where we are for January, more of southern Utah getting uh, the, the brunt of the storms with northern Utah doing not so well. So we could use a, a bit of storminess coming in January for Utah. When we look at temperature starting in October, we saw we were very warm. Again, we were about 5 to 7 degrees above normal, as was most of the western U.S. When we looked into November, things cooled off, and that's a sign that we had that jet stream coming through Granted, the precip went farther south, but it cooled things off. And this is actually a flip-flop of what we saw last year, where the Midwest and the East were very cold, and the West was very warm throughout most of the winter. Now we're seeing a little bit of a change where the eastern part of the country is warmer, the western is a lot cooler. We move into December, and we see more of this same pattern. Cooler in the West, very warm in the East. January, very cold in some areas. Uh, and it was quite cold in, in Utah for the most part. So if we can keep this cold, we can keep the snow that we have, and that'll be a good thing. When we look at our snowpack, and this is as of January 14th, snowpack numbers look very healthy for the most part. Uh, we've got 149% in the Virgin, and that's due to that constant southerly flow, 133% in the severe uh, snowpacks, including Colorado and the green leading into Lake Powell at 90%. But if you go farther north, things decrease a little bit. 82% in the bare, 83 in the upper green, and kind of a mix. But still, these numbers are much healthier than what we saw last year. When you look at the resultant water supply forecast, what you see right off the bat is these numbers are a lot lower. And that has to do with, as we melt snow in the spring, what the model is doing is saying we're going to lose melt water into the soils and into the deeper groundwater areas because we've had four years of below average runoff and below average snowpack. So those, those snow, the uh, soils are very dry and the, the uh, groundwater is quite low at that time. But when you look at southern Utah, they're expected to be quite normal as of the forecast in January. Granted, we've got a lot of winter to go. Things could change. We'll see how that shakes out. 
There you go. That's kind of the abbreviated version. Good snowpacks, average snowpacks, but when you look at the water supply, we're a little bit lower than normal. If we have 140% snowpack, roughly 150% snowpack, that should give us basically average runoff in the spring. So we'll see how the rest of this goes. <clears throat> I'll be putting more of these out as conditions evolve and as the Colorado Basin River Forecast Center produces another forecast come February. Uh, there's my contact info. There's an email. Uh, let me know if I can do anything else for you. Until then, we'll go from there. Thanks for listening.